Welcome to Leisure Industry Academy Meets, the first in a series of interviews where we meet and talk to some of the people shaping the modern world of the fitness industry. And today it gives me great pleasure to meet the woman regarded as having the world's best body, Miss Bikini Olympia 2012, Natalia Mello. Natalia, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Tell me first of all, where were you born and when? Well, I'm originally from Brazil. I was born in Sao Paulo in a long time ago, <laughs> January 19, 1984. Tell me what life was like then growing up in uh, Brazil. Uh, well, growing up, I grew up in another city, which is Fortaleza, in the northeast. Um, I mean, I was a very dumb, outdoorsy person. I always liked sports. I swam for 12 years. I was anything that climbing trees, falling from it, riding bikes, falling from it. I, I really like the outdoor stuff. So you were a bit of a tomboy then, really? Yes, yes, pretty much. Bruises everywhere. I loved it. But you decided then at the age of 14 that you wanted to, to join a gym and get involved in a gym. Tell us about that as well. I just really liked uh, to be active. I just really liked sports. Uh, I would ask my mom to sign me up for every single sport there was. So it just got to a time that she was like, all right, I, that's it. You need to pick one and that's where you're staying because every day I would come up with something new. I've tried every sport there is. So I swam for 12 years. That's the only one that stuck around for a while. Obviously swimming for 12 years, you must have been a great swimmer. Did you compete nationally and across the country? I wouldn't say national champion. I was, uh, I wasn't great. I, I was, I was horrible actually at swimming. <laughs> but I just liked the the competition part of it, and I think that also because I'm I'm an only child, I was always better at individual sports. I struggled sometimes with group sports, so I think that uh, having the control of winning or losing that it was in swimming that's that's what I liked. So at 17 you enrolled in a law course, but you decided at the age of 20 to drop out and to, to not complete it and move to Florida in America. What made you decide to do that? I just uh, felt there was a, a much bigger world out there that I was missing out. Uh, I mean, where, where I come from, in, in the city that I come from, it's very, uh, I would say, chauvinist. For a woman, you grow up, you go to school, and you graduate, and then after a while you get married, and that, that, that's the process, that's how it goes. And I, I didn't want it to be like that. I wanted to, to have control of my own life. I wanted to, to make my own money. I wanted to live alone, and to live alone in Brazil is very difficult because it's expensive. So I wanted to, to, to know what it was to be on, the owner of my destiny before I could settle with someone and have a family and so on. So tell us about your first fitness competition. You actually won it, didn't you? Yes, uh, I won my class and I won the overall, which is, uh, for people who, who don't know, um, the competition is the, the girls, when it comes to amateur level, the girls are divided by height, so you can have up to like five classes, and then the winner of each class competes against each other for an overall trophy. So I won my class and I won the overall. I was stoked. I, I didn't even think that I, I could be there. When the first time that I, I spoke with my coach at the time and she told me that I had to have like, I don't know, five meals a day and everything had to be weighted and I had to go to the gym twice a day, I thought she was out of my, her mind. Like, <laughs> no way I can do this. But I went forward. Why did you get into professional fitness competition? It was, it was almost like I was drifting through life, like not, not with a purpose. I didn't have a reason to wake up every day. I would wake up every day and be like, all right, so that's it. And, and I feel like the competition would make me work towards something, something that it's hard, it's very hard. So I thought, and, and that's one thing that I tell people today, that competing is not only the image thing, it's also the, the empowerment that it gives you, that you can take to other aspects of your life. 
So you won your first four competitions. You were photographed in lots of magazines, instantly recognised all over the world. Uh, and what was that like for you and how did you deal with the attention? Oh, well, I, I, I still get excited every time I see a picture of me in a, ma in, in a magazine. I still walk around and be like, by the way, that's me right here. That's me. Uh, but I, I, the first time that I saw myself in a, in, a, in, a, in a magazine, it was very, very, very surreal. Mainly like on the cover. I bought like three, three, like the first time I was on the cover of Fitness RX, I bought like three magazines. And then I went to the cashier and I put like one next to the other. And I'm like, she didn't recognize me though. <laughs> I'm like, maybe next time. <laughs> So you're working in a bar, you're now known all over the world as this international fitness competitor and then March 2011, in walks to the bar three or four rugby players on vacation. Roger Wilson was one of them. Did you notice him right away? I don't know. I don't know, just... I, I don't know, it's just like those things that you can't explain. Even though he didn't look at me, but... <laughs> but it's hard to explain. Well, he obviously did notice you because he went home, he found photos of you on the bar's website, tracked you down and got in contact with you through Facebook, is that right? He went to the uh, Blue Martinis, that's the place I used to work, to the bar that I used to work at, Facebook page, through, uh, looked through the pictures and found one that I was there, sent me a message. So you decided to arrange a date and obviously things went well, but how easy was it to then decide to keep seeing each other because he would have flown home and you were still in Florida? Well, easy? It wasn't easy. But I think that if you really want something, you can, you can make it happen. Uh, I was coming on vacation to Europe. I was going to Italy to visit my... I have family there. So I was like, hey, I'm going to Italy. Would you mind like, stopping by? <laughs> and so he did. And, and that's the first time that we actually met properly. So no doubt you decided that you were in love, you wanted to spend the rest of your lives together, but he was working and playing his rugby here in Belfast, you were in America. One of you had to make the move. How easy or difficult was it to decide to come here to Belfast? I mean, I, it wasn't something that I just woke up one day and was like, oh, all right, I'm going to pack everything and just move. Because um, I, was in, I had been living for a lot of for 10 years and it's a life, you know, it's, it's, it's people that you meet and it's friends that you make and, and you, it wasn't easy but through a lot of discussion and, and thinking and one of the things that I didn't want to do is to, to not work. Not working is definitely not an option for me and living for a lot of I noticed that a lot of my work required traveling. So what I thought was, well, if I'm traveling from Fort Lauderdale to other places, I can travel from Belfast to other places as well. And, 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 and that's, that's one of the things that was, made it clear for me that it was, able, it was doable. I could move to Belfast because I was able to, to I was going to be able to work. And now you are living here in Northern Ireland. What's it been like? What have the people been like since you've moved here? Uh, I mean, I've, I've been finding people very uh, helpful, very warm, uh, welcoming and, and trying to, to, to help me because when you move to a new place, not only the cultural difference but the basic thing, you driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> I mean, uh, that was one of the main, main challenges in, in finding places to go. Uh, grocery shopping, like the little basics that you don't realize and having people to always help you with these kind of things, it's, it's pretty cool and people here were very helpful with that. And also living with a man? Yeah, oh yes, yes. I have been living by myself for a very long time. <laughs> is, he, is he tidy? More than me, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you've obviously got massive knowledge um, and experience in training, so why did you choose Leisure Industry Academy and what have they actually done for you? When, when I first moved here, I have several certifications from America that I could easily transfer to, to the UK, but I think that knowledge, it's never too much. So I wanted to, to find a school that would teach me things that I hadn't learned already and everybody that I asked, I saw, and it goes back to that thing that we were talking about, about people being helpful, 
that I didn't know where to go. And I started asking people, and I would say that nine out of 10 people that I asked, they all recommended uh, Le Leisure Industry Academy. So I was like, well, this place must be good then. <laughs> and how have you used all the knowledge that you've gained from them? Uh, what I really liked about the course that I took, it was that um, not only you went into depth with the book aspect of it, like how things are done and how things work inside your body and stuff like that, but mainly because it took that knowledge to the real life. And the instructor brought a lot of uh, real life cases to us and made us think outside of the box. And that was pretty cool because I had never, I had never done it before within a course. I was a personal trainer in, in the States and every, a lot of the things that I knew was from the everyday life and he kind of made a shortcut for all of us who were in his class to, to make us think outside of the box. And constantly bringing updated uh, scientific studies and sending us links to, to useful information which I think that is the main thing when it comes to the fitness industry, because every day there is something new. So what makes a good personal trainer? Is it about being adaptable and always learning? Yes, 100%. I think, I think that, uh, I mean, you can even see that by opening social media. One day they will say that doing cardio on an empty stomach is good. The next day they will say that it's not good. And I think that you always have to educate yourself and see what works for you and for your clients. Because again, everyone is different. Everyone is different. And, and you kind of have to pick on these little things. Some people like to work out being trained by being yelled at. Other people don't like that. So have, being sensible enough to, to see the different types of clients you have. The highlight of your career, no doubt, was winning Miss Bikini Olympia in 2012. What did it feel like to win that competition and what would it be like to maybe win it again? I don't think words can describe the feeling of winning something that big. I mean, the, the, the Olympia is the biggest competition in the world. Uh, and it requires a lot of hard work, discipline, determination and a lot of no's to your friends and family to be able to step on that stage and to have the recognition of all the hard work it's it's every time that i remember it it gives me goosebumps because it's just awesome training um you talk about training your gluteus and there's three different muscles in it i'm just going to call it the bum if that's okay um you train it three times a week what is your favorite body part to train is that it i go through moods like i go through phases of what I like to train most. Sometimes I really like to push hard on my shoulders, but I think that that training the bum is pretty fun because you are, I, I, that's kind of like what I'm known for, I guess. And my ethnicity helps too. Uh, so I always try to adjust and find different exercises to, to make it fun and creative. Obviously diet is hugely important for training, but have you any little tips to maybe uh, prevent people from, from going off their, their diet and preventing cravings? 30% 30 per, 30, 30 of the times that you feel you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. So that's a problem that a lot of people have, is that um, they forget to drink water and they think they're hungry, but instead they're just thirsty. So keep on drinking your water, drink, uh, I mean, I, I drink about four liters of water a day. Uh, and this helps a lot. And another thing is out of sight, out of mind. If you don't have it in your house, you will not eat it. Every time that I try to have something that did not belong to my diet in my house and be, uh, oh yeah, I can do this. I have self-control, I have willpower. Yeah, I failed. So I just don't buy it, I just don't have it in the house. If I wanna have something, I'll just go to the garage next door, buy a little chocolate bar, eat it there, and that's it, call it a day. That's a good tip because I eat multi-packs in one sitting, probably best keep them out of the house. Um, but if you were to have a cheat meal, what would be your favorite? 
a very difficult question because I like food. <laughs> uh, but I like I'm, I'm, I have more of a sweet tooth, so chocolate uh, brownie with vanilla ice cream, oh. chocolate chip cookies. Oh, chocolate brownies, absolutely love them. My friend has this company called Tickety Moo. They have two chocolate brownies, ice cream in the middle. It's like a sandwich now of brownies and ice cream. It's amazing. Ice cream brownie. You can, you can give him my number. I <laughs> <laughs> can give him my contact information. Finally, Natalia, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, but what advice would you give to anyone wanting to become a personal trainer or compete in the fitness industry? Mainly that if, it, if it's for competing, let's start with the competing. It's not easy, but it's, it, it's rewarding. It's worth it because all the challenges that you face in getting ready for a competition and the strength that you gain from it, you can take to all other aspects of your life. And the other thing, and for, for pers as far as personal trainer, uh, I think you have to understand your client and you have to be willing to learn every day. And, and, and don't think that you just, I don't know, gonna do, for example, I see a lot of people do one competition and then they wanna become a personal trainer and they think they're gonna have 10 clients overnight. Doesn't work like that. It's, it's a constant, it's a work in progress every day, all day, all year, every month. You, 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 you have to, to earn, your space and, and earn the trust of your clients. And I suppose, of course, go and see the Leisure Industry Academy. Natalia, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure meeting you. A hundred percent, yes, yes. Natalia, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.